morning, good day, future researchers, and to all the students out there. Hello, 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 kumusta kayo? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tim May, kasama mo sa iyong research journey. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in research. Welcome to another vlog. So, without further ado, huwag na natin patagalin ito at dumeretso na tayo sa second part ng ating review of related literature and studies. So, in this vlog, we're going to discuss about uh, the functions of review of related literature and studies, the difference, again, between related literature and related studies, the effective library research, how to organize uh, RRLS. First, so let us discuss how to organize Chapter 2 or the RRLS. So, there are three ways on how we're going to uh, arrange this review of related literature. Number one, is number one is chronological order. When we say chronological order, magkakasunod siya. It can be by means of the year it was published. So, pero tatandaan nyo ulit na uh, when you are researching for RRLS, it should be updated. So, dapat within within the past 10 years. Meron tayong number 2, which is by part. So, pag sinabing by part, hinahati naman to according to their classification. So, for example, lahat muna ng foreign studies and then followed by lahat muna ng local studies and then kasunod lahat muna ng uh, local literature and then followed by uh, foreign literature. So, by classification. So, tandaan nga natin na ang related literature and related studies, there are two classifications, the foreign and the local. Nowadays, most of the researchers are using the third type of how we organize chapter 2 and that is by variable. When we say by variable, we are using the thematic organization. So, pag sinabing by variable, uunahin muna natin yung pinaka-importanting variable sa study mo. At saan ba natin makikita yung pinaka-importanting variable? That can be found in your research title. For example, your title is Hypoglycemic Effect of Serpentina Leaves in Type 2 Diabetes. So, ang mangyayari dyan, so hanapin natin ano ba yung mga important variables dyan. So, we have the type 2 diabetes and we also have the serpentina. So, mauna natin ilagay yung independent variable which is the serpentina. So, lahat muna ng tungkol sa serpentina ang ilalagay natin. So, magkakasama na dyan kung siya ba ay local literature, local studies, or foreign or local literature. Okay, that is for the thematic organization. Okay, to further understand these types of organization, so I'll be showing you the example of how we write this chapter 2 or the review of related literature. I'm gonna show you on how we organize our chapter 2 or the review of related literature and studies. We have three different types or different guidelines in writing the RRLS. The first one is chronological, which means it is uh, organized by year it was published and then we have the bipart and thematic organization so how does it go for number one we have chronological so paano po ba kapag chronological ang ginagawa okay so for example san po ba natin kukuhanin yung mga ilalagay natin sa review of related literature what are those variables that we have to uh, we we have to search and we have to write in our RRLS or chapter 2. So, for example, th this is your statement of the problem. So, which the title of your research is Utilization of Mabolo, just Pyrus Blancoi Fruit as an Alternative Source of Biofuel. So, as you can see, you have the independent and dependent variable. And always remember that those two variables are really important when you are searching for the information that you will write on your RRLS. So, we have the Mabolo. And we also have the biofuel. So, those two is very important. So, hindi dapat yan mawawala at ma hindi dapat mawawala siya sa inyong RRLS. So, what else? You have the flammability, the volatility, the pH, the miscibility, the boiling point, and the length of consumption. Okay, again, number one, we have the chronological. When we say chronological, it means 
by year it was published. So, ibig sabihin, ang pagkakasunod-sunod ng dapat makikita nyo sa inyong chapter 2 ay by date. So, sabi nga natin, uh, kailangan nakalagay yung citation or kung kailan na published yung article na nakuha mo. So, for example, ito na nga yung mga, art, yung mga variables na kailangan mong hanapin at yan yung ilalagay mo sa RRLS. So, ang mangyayari niyan, okay, by, pag sinabing year published, chronological, ibig sabihin, sunod-sunod siya by date. So, ibig sabihin, sisimula natin doon sa pinaka dulo, so kung kailan siya pinakaunang na-published, and then hanggang sa recent. Pero, Yung date 9, so for example, uh, 1990, nandito sa range ng 19, 1952. So, sunod-sunod na yan, mabolo, biofuel, lahat ng variables na to na ang citation ay pumapasok lang dito sa year na to. So, yan yung una mong ilalagay sa iyong RRLS. Pero katulad ng sinabi ko sa inyo, kailangan updated. So, since 2021 na tayo at ito pa rin yung mga date na yan, okay, so hindi pwedeng yan ya yeah, rejected na yan kasi dapat mag-start tayo from 2011 hanggang 2021. Okay? Next. So, yung second uh, way on how you organize the chapter 2 is by part. Meaning to say, pag sinabing by part, it is uh, classified as foreign literature, local literature, foreign studies, and local studies. So, for example, ulahin muna. Okay, lahat muna ng foreign literature tungkol dito sa mabolo, biofuel, flammability, volatility, pH, miscibility, boiling point, length, and of consumption. And then, lahat naman ng local literature. And then, kapag nabanggit muna siya lahat, okay, lahat naman ng foreign studies at lahat naman ng local studies. So, ganun kung paano inoorganize ang RRLS. And number three, yung last. Okay. Now, so yung last, ito yung third way on how we organize the chapter 2 is by thematic organization. So, it is by variable and it is accordance with the statement of the problem. So, ibig sabihin by variable. So, for example, di ba ang kaunahan natin dito is... And then, lahat muna ng tungkol sa Marigold. Yan man ay foreign literature, local literature, foreign studies, local studies, magkakasama na yan. Pero ang uunahin nyo dapat ilagay dyan is, kumbaga, per variable nga siya. And then, ayan, sa band paper nyo, nakalagay dito Marigold. Tapos, nakalagay dyan po ay, na yan ay mga na-search nyo tungkol sa Marigold. And of course, do not forget to write the... Uh, the citation kung kailan siya na-publish. So, paano naman po yung, kung magkakaiba syempre ang pagkukuha nyo ng resources, no? So, dapat i-arrange nyo din yung mga words dyan, yung mga paragraph nyo by year. Ano? So, kumbaga, para siyang uh, pinagsama-sama natin yung tatlong way on how we, or we organize the RRLS. So, naka-thematic organization siya na chronological, which is lahat ng naka, na, na-search nyo all about Marigold. So, yung pinaka-recent muna hanggang dun sa hindi. And then, may author at saka may foreign studies at may foreign uh, literature. Okay? So, ayan. Marigold. So, lahat muna ng Marigold. And then, lahat muna ng tungkol sa vitamin A. Lahat ng tungkol sa carotenoid. Ka lahat ng tungkol sa carotenoid. Lahat ng tungkol sa color brightness. And all. Okay? Now. So, for example, sa Marigold. Okay? Dapat minimum of 10 authors ang kukuha na nyo ng sources. Hindi pwede pag may nakita kayo ng isa, ay eh, tapos na, okay na yun. So, hindi pwede ganun. 10 authors na may 10 articles, some na may 10 sources. So, ayan, meron kayong 5 related literature at 5 related study. So, ang tendency kasi niyan, yung sa related, related literature, kailangan mo siyang discussan pa ng, ng related studies niya. Okay? Ayan. Okay, this is the front part. And then, we also have the back part. Okay, so, ayan. Yung tinutukoy itong front part at saka back part, pag nag-discuss kayo, kung tungkol, for example, tungkol sa Marigold, so, i-discuss nyo yung related literature. Yun yung unang-unang sentence nyo or unang paragraph. And then, yung back part, sa kanyo naman siya lalagyan ng related studies. Ano, so, ayan, lima, lima sa RL at saka lima sa 
RS. Okay, and then, ayan, vitamin A, vitamin A concentration, ganun din, 10 authors, 10 articles and sources. Okay, so same lang din. Now, what are the functions of review of related literature and studies? Number one, the review establishes the existing problem of the topic of interest. So, syempre makikita mo dyan kung ano yung mga problema ba na kinakaharap ng society mo, ng iyong nation, kung bakit ikaw na uh, arrive with that kind of study. Okay, number two, it, the reviews pinpoints the weaknesses of your study. Yes, oo. Inaalam din dyan ano ba yung mga kahinaan, ano po ba yung mga problema na pwedeng ma-encounter din, uh, or ano, ano yung mga kakulangan dun sa study na ginagawa. Number three, the review leads the researchers to proper procedure so that they will uh, arrive with accurate results. So, kalimitan kasi, syempre meron na tayong nabubuo sa, sa utak natin na procedure na gagawin natin sa ating study. Pero yun naman ay, kumbaga, for example, alam mo lang, that is your prior knowledge about your study, or for example, narinig mo lang sa other researchers. Pero kung magkohandak ka ng another review of related literature, pwede ka pa kasi doon makahanap ng mas tamang proseso on how you're going to arrive with your study. At ito naman ang kagandahan sa review of related literature. And number four, the review highlights the importance of the investigation. Now, how are we going to know that it is related literature and related study? So, ano po ba yung mga uh, purpose nitong related literature at related studies? So, in sa review of related literature, we have two. Number one, it must explain the statement of one author about a certain topic and contrast the same about what other authority says it. So, meron kasi mga review of related literature tayong mababasa na uh, isa lang yung topic pero magkasalungat yung sinasabi ng dalawang author. So, pwede mo yung isama parehas and then sa baba, you have to uh, give conclusion or synthesis doon sa sinabi ng dalawang author na yun. Okay, number two, it also identifies the origin of the problem. Yeah. Okay, so doon naman sa, rel sa related study, ano naman yung mga kailangan mo i-pinpoint, ano yung kailangan mo uh, pag-aralang mabuti at ilagay sa chapter 2 mo. Number one, of course, is the researcher's motivation in conducting the study. Okay, yan ang hindi dapat mawawala. Number two, the objectives of the study. Siyempre, kailangan mong malaman parehas ba kayo ng objective. Kung parehas kayo, ibig sabihin, you can use that study in your chapter 2. Number 3, variables involved in the study. Okay, are they the same? Parehas ba rin ng variable? Kaya nga, related study. So, dapat lagi yung hinahanap yung study is also related in what you are investigating. Number 4 is the research design of the study. Number 5, we have the quantitative analysis. And of course, number 6, the major results and conclusion of the study. So, napaka-importante ng conclusion kasi dyan natin malalaman kung ano ba ang naging ending ng ginawang investigation noong uh, study or research study na binasa mo. Okay? Hanggang dito na lang muli ang ating lesson vlog. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from me. This is me again, Teacher Tin May. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates. So, para nga pala sa effective, uh, effective library na isa pa rin sa topic natin ngayon, nilalagay ko yung link ng video sa baba ng description box na to. And also, uh, the topic about synthesizing and citing the literature. So, ilalagay ko lahat yun para pwede nyo balikan doon at Pwede nyo i-click doon para mas madali. Okay, meron akong ginawang video para dyan. So, thank you for listening. Goodbye. See you on my next vlog.